one of the things I found when I first started interviewing couples and looked at my data was that, you know, couples didn't struggle all the time, but neither was it a, a smooth ride all the time. And the struggles they face really came at three points in their career and life journey. And these points were actually rather predictable. And as you said, the book is organized around what I call the three transitions. And I can walk you through them very briefly, but they all revolve around essentially a developmental question that the couples are wrestling with. So the first transition revolves around the developmental question, how can we make this work? How can we structure our lives in a way that we can have two careers and a relationship and, and thrive in that arrangement? And it's a question that all couples face in the first period of their relationship together. And what's important to understand is that they face this, whether we get together at 18, at 38 or at 68, we're all going through the first transition. And the reason this first transition here comes is if you think back a few moments to the first few months or years when you were in the relationship with your partner, you know, the honeymoon period, it was wonderful. <laughs> um, and, and part of the reason it's wonderful, apart from its new love, is it, although you may feel very committed to each other, you're essentially living on parallel tracks, that you have the career path you had before you met, you had your friends and family, and you've layered on top this wonderful relationship. What's not to like? But that, that never lasts. Because eventually couples will hit um, a, a life event or a tough choice that means they need to combine those parallel tracks into one life. The second transition is really interesting because it's linked to our career stage. It's linked to the, the stage that we typically think of as mid-career, which roughly occurs around our mid-40s, but it's not necessarily linked to age. It's really linked to career stage. And if we think back to our 20s and 30s and what's happening in our career at that stage, it's a period of striving. But what happens when we reach our, reach our mid-career point is that many of us reach a point where we start thinking, you know, maybe that path I'm on, it just doesn't quite feel my own. And of course, it doesn't quite feel our own because we've partly chosen it in response to these social expectations. And when people start having those thoughts, as you will well know from the people you work with in your work on career transitions, and the third mm -hmm. transition is actually a really interesting one. So it comes at a stage, a later stage, when our social roles are changing. So our, our children, if we've had them, are leaving home. We're no longer the bright young things, the high potential people in our organizations. We've really gone into a the more senior role. Hopefully, we're managing those people. We're the mentors of the organization. And, um, and this time represents a real um, time of opposites. So on the one hand, we can feel a sense of loss. Right? I'm no longer that hands-on parent. I'm no longer that bright young thing, that high potential person in the organization. But suddenly at this third transition is a time when we have the freedom so we can broaden our horizons out from this focus on family relationship and um, career to, to volunteering, to legacy, to portfolio careers, to entrepreneurship, to, um, to not-for-profits. And so we see for the first time in our career journey these opportunities to go wide as opposed to go narrow. 